In this video, we'll start semantics, which is about the meaning of words. Don't worry, this is a non-mathematical introduction to semantics. If you want the mathematical semantics, check out my series on mathematical linguistics. But for this intro, we're just going to talk about the fun stuff in semantics. So let's start with something that you might already know. Homophones. These are different words that share the same sounds or the same pronunciation. So for instance, homophones could be something like the word right and right. They're pronounced the same, but they have different meanings. He was right. He will write a book. They're different. Or words like so and so. He's so happy to so. They're pronounced the same, but they mean different things. Or for instance, peace and peace, which are spelled very, very similarly. The only difference is the vowels before the C. And for writing, this can be a confusion for kids, especially when they learn these words. They'll interchange peace and peace all the time because they just hear them as the word peace and they're like, well, which way do we write this? And this is something we pick up over time. Now, homophones are when different spellings have the same sound. But there's another case where we have the same spelling, the same sound, but there's multiple meanings. And these are called homonyms. So for instance, the word bat. This can mean something like a baseball bat, or it can mean that little flying thing in the sky that's very scary and turns into vampires. I am not an artist, so please excuse my terrible drawing of a bat, but it could be this sort of flying bat. I guess I need to give it fangs and eyeballs, or it can be your lovely baseball bat, which I was hoping I could draw better than the flying bat, but apparently I cannot. Another type of homonym would be a word like bank. And you might not think of this as a homonym at first, but we have the bank that we're all thinking of, where we have our bag of money. It's a terrible, terrible bag of money that looks like a money tomato. I'm sorry. And then we can also think about a river bank. So there's a river, and you can swim at a river bank. Now, usually when we say bank and we mean it to mean river bank, we would specify river bank, but it's certainly possible to produce a sentence that says, oh yeah, my friends and I went swimming at the bank yesterday, especially when maybe you're in a country town that has a river bank and that's really common for you to go there with friends. Then you wouldn't say river bank, you would just say bank. But sometimes this can lead to difficulties in processing these sentences. And this can lead to something called lexical ambiguity. And this is when the interpretation of a sentence is not really clear because there's a word in the sentence that can have multiple meanings. So for example, I bought a pen for my dog. Okay, why would you buy a pen for your dog? Your dog doesn't have thumbs. Oh wait, no, this isn't the kind of pen that you write with. This is the kind of pen that you cage a dog in. Oh, okay, this makes more sense, right? Yeah, so this is called lexical ambiguity, because we think I bought a pen for my dog as the writing utensil, but then we get to this for my dog, and then we think, oh, no, wait, the dog isn't going to write. It's probably the dog pen. So this is a good example of lexical ambiguity. Lexical, meaning that it is ambiguous due to the word. We can normally avoid this by providing context. So for instance, if we say, my dog keeps destroying furniture at night, so I bought him a pen. Then when you get to this word pen, when you read these sentences or are listening to a speaker, you're not confused because the context makes it very clear which type of pen we're talking about. Compare it to the second sentence, my dog really wants to write a novel, so I bought him a pen. Now it's really clear which pen this is, and the sentence makes sense, but you may be thinking, what, what do you mean your dog really wants to write a novel? That's weird. Your dog can't want to write a novel. But giving a context can avoid lexical ambiguity. There's another type of ambiguity that is mainly syntactic, but we'll still cover it here. And this is called structural ambiguity. And this is when a sentence is ambiguous because there are different possible sentence structures. So for instance, here's an example. I killed the man with a toothbrush. In one interpretation, we just happened to kill some man who is holding a toothbrush. So maybe he's brushing, he's brushing his teeth and we killed him while he was brushing his teeth. That would be the first example. But there's another interpretation where I killed the man with a toothbrush. So the weapon that I was holding was a toothbrush and I used that toothbrush to kill the man. The man 
doesn't necessarily have to have a toothbrush here. So this occurs because of the way that these prepositional phrases work. So with a toothbrush is a prepositional phrase and it can either modify the man or it could modify the verb. And depending on which way our brain wants to connect this prepositional phrase to the verb or the noun will give us a different interpretation. So this is called structural ambiguity. Now, that's kind of the fun stuff, but there's some more semantic notation and uh, terms that we should get familiar with. So for instance, one of the ideas in semantics is that you can paraphrase something. And this essentially means that you can have two sentences that are said differently, but contain the exact same message. So for instance, I could say Jeff ate the pie, or I could say the pie was eaten by Jeff. Both of these have exactly the same content. So the information in A and B is exactly the same, but it's just expressed differently. The only differences between there might be when you use them. So for instance, if you're writing a formal essay, then you probably want to use the active version A. If you're talking about the pie in a paragraph in this really interesting novel with lots of description and you describe the pie and it was amazing, but the pie was stolen, you might end the paragraph with the pie was eaten by Jeff just because you want the emphasis on the pie, which is the first thing. But the content is the same. They mean the same thing. So these are called paraphrases. Entailment is a little bit more confusing, but entailment is essentially when you have a sentence A that asserts that another sentence B is true. So given some sentence, you can make another statement about that sentence. So for instance, if I say I have a blue pen, this would entail that I have a pen. Because I'm being really specific here, I'm saying I have a blue pen. So if I have a blue pen, then surely it must be true that I have a pen. Or if I say he is short and cute, he is short and he is cute, then clearly he is short. Okay, but if we say something like the dog is brown, from this sentence we cannot get that the dog is loud. There's nothing about the dog being brown that makes us believe that the dog is loud. So there's no entailment in three. Let's see, what if we took A and we said I have a pen, does that entail that I have a blue pen? And the answer to that is no, because if I say I have a pen, we don't know what color that pen could be. It could be red, it could be blue, it could be black. So this is kind of the tricky thing about entailment. When we have something specific, it would entail a more general statement. But when we have a general statement, it doesn't entail something more specific. So entailment is kind of like saying we have the specific scenario, and from that specific scenario, we can maybe say something more general. Okay, the final thing we'll talk about in this video is contradiction. And these essentially say that when you have two sentences, we'll have a contradiction if both of them are true. So contradictions are really when sentences A and sentence B can't both be true. So for instance, if I say he is single, and I say, okay, this is a true statement. My friend is single. And then the next day I come and I say, oh yeah, he's married too. That doesn't work out because you can't be single and married at the same time. If these are both true, then you have to be lying because someone can't be single and married at the same time. Similarly, uh, this is not a, well, I mean, apparently this is a controversial topic when it shouldn't be. You have people saying the earth is flat and you have people saying the earth is a sphere. Clearly they both can't be true at the same time because if it's flat, it can't be a sphere. And if it's a sphere, then it can't be flat. So that's the first video on semantics. If there are any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them the best that I can.